Yeah, let me just share uh, a, a short reflection this morning with you guys as well uh, before we pray so we have some, some more time to spend in prayer. Um, I echo everybody's just themes and, and impressions this morning. Maggie just saying, you know, this psalm speaks to freedom. And uh, I think Hai Sung was just talking about the security we have in our relationship with God. And Carol was reflecting upon um, God's love, God's gentleness with us. And so, yeah, I too found a lot of comfort in the psalm. And, um, you know, verse one, blessed is the one whose transgression is forgiven, whose sin is covered. You know, that's, that's us. I mean, that is us as New Testament Christians, right? As, as post-cross Christians. I mean, we are truly forgiven. Our, our sin has been covered uh, completely through the cross. You know, our, our past sin, our present sin, our future sin, it's all been nailed to the cross forever. And so we are the blessed ones. Our, our transgression has been covered. We are forgiven um, completely. And I think a lot of times it's hard to believe that. Um, yeah, I'm forgiven for the sins before I became a Christian, right? We think, and then now I became a Christian and, oh, I still struggle with sin. So therefore I, I'm not completely forgiven. But the reality is he nailed our sins to the cross once and for all, a final sacrifice. We've been completely forgiven. Uh, past, present, future sin. We're covered in his righteousness. Um, reminded of 2 Corinthians 5.21, for our sake, he made him to be sin who knew no sin so that in him, we might become the righteousness of God. And so, you know, that, that reminder, that encouragement that when God looks upon me, when he looks upon us, he sees Jesus, you know, that we have this boldness, we have this confidence uh, to approach our heavenly father every single day, regardless of how we feel about ourselves, uh, because his righteousness covers us, that, that he sees his son, Jesus, when we, when we uh, stand before the Lord, not our sin, but the righteousness of Christ. And so it's that boldness, that confidence uh, that we have because of God and his goodness. And uh, verse two, uh, blessed is the man against whom the Lord counts no iniquity. And again, he, he doesn't count our sin against us. Uh, he's removed it as far as the east is uh, from the west. He doesn't keep count. Um, you know, thinking about Yom Kippur, the Day of Atonement in the Old Testament, uh, they would sacrifice two goats. Well, they'd sacrifice one goat and the other goat was let go. And so one was a blood sacrifice uh, to show that, you know, blood was needed to atone for sin. And the other one, they would pray and lay the sins of the people on this other goat. And then they would send it out into the wilderness as you know, as far as the horizon, you'd watch this goat just run away. And um, that symbolized the removal of sin, that, that the sins of the people God remembers no more. He counts them no more against them. And um, what a beautiful truth for us as believers that uh, because of Jesus and his death and his, um, his cross, God doesn't count our sin against uh -huh. us. And I think that's the struggle. You know, do we really believe this? Do, do we take God on his word um, that that's the reality that we live in uh, every single day uh, when, when we do fail, when we do stumble? Um, you know, in verse uh, two, uh, blessed is the one in whose spirit there is no deceit. You know, what does that mean? What does that look like? Um, it can't mean the one that's without sin because, I mean, David just later on, he talks about his sin. So. I think it's acknowledging our, our sin, acknowledging our need for grace daily, you know, that, that we need this grace every single day. Uh, and so he talks about in verses three to five, um, you know, I haven't kept, when I kept silent, my bones wasted away uh, through my groaning all day long, uh, day and night, your hand was heavy upon me. My strength was, my strength was dried up. It wasn't until verse five, I acknowledge my sin to you did not cover my iniquity. I, and I said, I will confess my transgressions to the Lord and you forgave my sin, right? You forgave my iniquity. And so, you know, it, it, it's not living as if it's dependent upon our own righteousness. It's living as if I just need to be honest with God, you know, about my need uh, for grace. And he always offers grace. He always offers this, this grace and forgiveness. Uh, and then just reminded of this great quote by Tim Keller, you know, the gospel is this, we are more sinful and flawed in ourselves than we ever dared 
to believe, yet at the very same time, we are more loved and accepted in Jesus Christ than we ever dared hope. And so it's not by minimizing or denying that, yeah, we, we are, we're still sinners, we still wrestle with sin, but acknowledging that even then God loves us, even then God accepts us, um, and his grace is available. And so, um, yeah, and then in verse 6, you know, everybody talked about that idea of going to God um, when he may be found. Um, surely in the rush of great waters, they shall not reach him. I kind of was thinking about the moments when I feel overwhelmed and condemned and, you know, accused. And um, I feel the weight of my sin. You know, in, in those moments, sometimes it's hard to see or feel God. And um, in verse seven, he says, you are a hiding place for me. You preserve me from trouble. And, and so in those moments, I need to remind myself of his grace, of his gospel, and uh, often just preach the gospel to myself, you know, in that, that hiding place. And um, just keep returning to the truths over and over again uh, of who I am in Christ and how much I need his grace. And so I want to just close by just reading this short little section uh, from Paul Tripp and his devotional. And, um, he, you know, he, he talks about, we all tend to want to think we're more righteous than we really are. Uh, we don't like to think of ourselves as still desperately in need of God's rescuing grace. And we surely don't want to face the fact that we need to be rescued uh, from us, from ourselves. When we argue for our own righteousness, working hard to deny the evidence of our sin, we fail to seek the amazing grace that is our only hope. Grace is only ever attractive to sinners. The riches of God's goodness are only ever sought by the poor. The spiritual healing of the great physician is only esteemed by those who acknowledge they still suffer from the spiritual disease of sin. It's a tragedy when we praise God for his grace on Sunday and deny our need for the grace of God the rest of the week. Face the fact that today you'll never outgrow your need for grace, no matter how much you learn and how much you mature until you're on the other side of the struggle when sin is no more. The way we begin to celebrate the grace of God so freely gives every day is by admitting how much we need it. And so I want to encourage us that this psalm is a psalm of freedom, as, um, as we've talked about. Uh, but it comes from acknowledging, it comes from acknowledging how much we need God's grace and uh, that it's, it's so freely available. And so, I, I, you know, that gives me boldness and confidence to approach God uh, this morning uh, with you guys. And so thank you for sharing your thoughts. And it was an encouragement for me as well.